The dog's dancing. Look at the doggo. Oh, look at him. Oh, you. so cute. I want to shoot him. What? Rick. <laughs> Rick, <laughs> Rick, <laughs> Rick, don't make me do it, man. Wait, don't make me do it, okay. man. You know, I've recently looked into getting, uh, you know, emulation um, consoles. You know, you know, the uh, Retron 5 is one that a lot of people have talked about. I know there's people yeah. out there who dislike it because, you know, it's not a true, uh, they say, and I quote, it's not a true emulation console. And I'm just like, does it play uh. all the games that it says? Yes. Does it look basically mean that you don't ever have to put the game in ever again? It just copies it onto a on like onto your uh, little uh, SD card that you have in the back. Yes. Then what's the deal? What what's the problem? Dude, there's there's something really shitty that a lot of people are one day probably going to have to come to terms with, and it's that that time is is gone it will never be 1996 again it will never be 2001 again it'll never be 1991 again you will never get that experience that you're looking for 100 percent exactly the way that it used to be yeah i mean it just isn't that way anymore a lot of the like components like a lot of the tvs that you would need and the it's just there's so many things that just aren't in production anymore it's never going to be the same and you're never going to feel the way that you felt when you were playing that shit a long time ago make new memories. but you can do your best to honor it and have yeah. fun with what there is available well, i don't see anything wrong with them well i, I don't see anything wrong with them all these snes games up here i have all the old nintendo you know nes games that are at my disposal yeah i have some genesis games that are at my disposal I have some Game Boy Advance and Game... Like, I have, like, my original copy of uh, Pokemon Yellow back there, dude. Yeah. Like, dude, I would kill to be able to play that again. And, oh, yeah. And, I, and the fact that I could put it into the Retron 5 and that it would copy... Oh, the cube. Have you or, seen the little cube? Yes. Yes, I have, which... That again, thing looks cool as shit. Yeah, and I'm, I'd be interested in that. Uh, it's just, again, the Retron 5 where it can do that and it can basically just mm -hmm. emulate everything perfectly and it stores every, yeah. it can store everything onto an SD card. There's different versions of the Retron 5, too. There's, like, upgraded models of it and stuff that I've seen and yes. different color schemes. And well, I know the Beach I think one. it's cool, man. I don't, I don't, I understand what the gripe is, but to me, if, if you are going to be that big of a purist about it, you really just need to keep learning how to repair and refurbish the original hardware. You're going to have to become either really rich or really good at fixing busted shit. Yeah. And also, same with like restoring classic cars and shit. I mean, there's that same debate about original parts or replacement parts and stuff like that. I think that it'll eventually come down to like even that you know, with, with the retro games and shit. Like, even if it is a refurbished retro console, are the components original? Like, did you jack that from another console and fix it that way? Like, reproduction pieces and boards and shit, and even that's going to be a big deal. Yeah. I'm sure it probably even is and, now, but... And you see, the virtual mm -hmm. console is something that a lot of people have... Uh, they say that's one thing that they really miss about the Wii. You know, and yeah, and rightfully so because it was an amazing way for you to play a bunch of older games that weren't available to you. And I know yes. that you know people like us can afford to go out and grab retro stuff and play that. I mean, you know, you have like behind you is a treasure trove of just retro stuff, and I've got my wall over here yeah. that's got all of my retro games and stuff on it, and I'm still expanding it. And there's actually GameCube games that I'm going to be getting here soon. That I can't wait to get my hands on and play again. Right. But again, well, don't get me wrong. It's over a decade worth of collecting shit. Yes. It didn't happen overnight, you know. No. And you have been there with me, helping me research. Like even back before game prices went crazy, for me to get Persona oh, One and Two, it took both of us researching and working and figuring out how to piece those things together because I couldn't buy them all together, really. And the so, biggest thing yeah. that I really regret is not going and taking up, um, you know, Maverick, you know, rest in peace, my dude, on his uh, game collection that he had 
Like, if I yep. could have gone over there with $400 and been like, dude, I will buy yep. all these off of you right now. That's where I got Sui Coden from. Yeah. Was from Maverick. And, and I saw him. He had Castlevania Symphony of the Night Black just, like, throwing the like disc OG on his Black bed. Label, just like, oh, my and, God. And I was like, dude, please, for the love stop, of God, please stop, don't throw please, that disc. Please, please stop. Yeah. <laughs> please. I would have gladly taken but, all those off of him. But yeah. Again, He was know, a wild man. Opportunity presented itself, and it just it wasn't meant to be. But yep. Scott the Waz is here to talk to us about uh, the Wii vir- uh, Virtual Console. And I mm. guess it's uh, high time for us to check out what good old Scotty boys got to say. Let's check it out, and let's see what's up. Here we go. Hey, all Scott here. Hi, I Scott. signed a petition to force unemployment checks to be given out as 3DS eShop cards. That way, nobody <laughs> has an excuse to not have fun while being unemployed. Now, that is the happiest-looking angry mob I've ever seen. Now, why couldn't oh they God. make it go on the virtual console and buy Mole Mania? I'm a simple man. I love this, Mole not Mania. these. Video game consoles are great. I love them. But it's just needlessly complicated to have like 12 different systems. As time goes on, it's just so much more convenient to have all your games both old and new on one system. Having a bunch of your older systems plugged in at once is my favorite t-shirt right now, and leaving them all unplugged and in the closet makes it less likely you're going to play them. You have to pull everything out and find all the cables that go with it just to realize you're breaking out a sex CD just to play Double Switch. It's a mess. I love the games on these older systems. I want to play them, but having more than like three systems plugged in at once can be ridiculous, and leaving the old consoles in the closet makes it more of a hassle to play. Now, different video game consoles have their own charm to them. Playing games made for the system on the console it originated on just feels natural in some cases, and you do grow a bit attached to those old plastic boxes. But what if I told you you could play your old favorite games on your new system? Having legacy- That's one of the main reasons why you wanted to get an Xbox Series X, is just so that you could have the backwards compatibility on it and- Dude, and it is really awesome. Um, I have- thoroughly enjoyed that so thank you once again for the greatest yeah i was telling nate like don't worry about getting me a birthday gift for years <laughs> you know years like do not even think about it don't consider it this thing has been the best dude i can put my discs in there and it has so many backwards compatible uh options for stuff that i really want to play like the elder scrolls games all the way back yeah. to morrowind and um skate three just like really really enjoyable shit from the original xbox like the conquer reloaded game um stuff that i i enjoyed that's yeah. there um and I'm, the rare collection is so sick to have and i'm glad i that love I was, that that's on there i'm glad that i was able to help you out with that and my my whole thing was i just wanted to be able to uh you know get get you that and again yeah it took him two weeks to finally come up here after oh my his God. birthday for him to finally open. it was my birthday by the time he came around yeah and nate kept like yo come over come over come over and, then, and i was like oh, i was just really busy and i would come over and then i wouldn't have time to do anything other than film and then immediately fucking yeah haul ass and then and then and eventually we were able to get him over here and he was under the pretense that it was just opening these for me and then I yeah, revealed... like a normal day at the office doing a live stream, just yeah. like opening these consoles up, reviewing them, taking a look, checking them out. And then just, by the way, this one's yours. And then he was like, no, 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 no. Just yeah. completely like not wanting to have it. And I, well, I... You had almost sold me on the idea of a PS5. Yeah, because I was sitting there listening to everything you had to say, checking out that controller, not knowing. Because you got to remember, at that point in time, we had no idea Game Cap, Game Pass would become what it has become. No, we had no idea that Xbox would be making the moves that it made. Like the, the console hadn't been out for very long. No, no. And at all. so we were both not knowing how good things were going to go for Xbox. But I was like, dude, this controller is like the nicest, and I still think. The PS5 controller is the nicest controller I've ever held it's, up to this it's point. It's up there, man. I mean, it's basically... It, it, they basically have learned every lesson that they can from every other man, you know, co- controller manufacturer out there. And they're just like, yeah, yeah, we're not going to do all that uh, unfor- un- good, you know, not good shit. And we're going to put all the good shit in this controller. And it took them a, a, a rehash or two to get, you know, the vibration stuff right. Yeah. Before it would, you know, so it wouldn't break. But again, you know, the co- controllers that are out there now are 
are leaps and bounds above almost anything else I've ever touched. Yeah, but I was stoked to get the Xbox, and yes, the backwards compatibility situation for that thing, it's unbelievable. It really is. I didn't expect for it to be what it is, and it's they're doing a great job. Hopefully, PlayStation will be inspired to do um, the same, because I, I think that I think PlayStation's back catalog is superior. Oh, dude, uh, the PS2 but, catalog alone, no, yeah, let alone the but, PS1 and the, the late PS3. That's why I love my my modded PS3, because I can just put any PlayStation disc up to PS3 in it and it plays it. Yeah. Oh, it's a great machine. Oh, so good. All right, anyway, back to this. The content on new systems is so nice. Sure, you're probably going to play the new titles made specifically for that system more, but just being able to play the older games without having to yank out an old console mm. is the dream. It's so convenient Pretty to cool. have these older titles available to play on the system you play the most. That even if you don't play the older titles that much, just having them readily available makes it easier for me to sleep at night. Old games on new platforms isn't something it's they true. came up with, uh, mm, I don't know, yeah. like four days ago. It's been a thing for over three decades. We can trace re-releases back to old arcade games releasing on the NES, then remakes of NES games releasing on the SNES, mm -hmm. SNES, yeah, SNES right games there. were repackaged on the PS1, compilations of all different types of old games on the PS2. But with the original Xbox, the entire concept of re-releasing old games changed with the introduction of Xbox Live Arcade. You'd have to pop yeah. an Xbox Live Arcade disc, but then you could download smaller bite-sized titles. Stuff like Feeding Frenzy and Dig Dug. Oh! Yes, classic games. Dig Dug goes hard. On Come Xbox. on. It does. Dig Dug is still top-notch. The console wasn't the like most well-known. The idea completely ran wild as soon as the next generation consoles came out, especially with the Wii. It had such a large supply yep. of classic downloadable games, all under the title of Virtual Console, a virtual way to play older consoles. <sighs> it was such a success on the Wii that Nintendo continued the brand on the Nintendo 3DS, Wii U, and that's it. I have so many memories of the Virtual Console and all three of the systems it appeared on. So let's take a look back at the service and the ups and downs and urban champions for $5 that came with it. At E3 2005, Nintendo unveiled their next system, the Nintendo Revolution, back when people thought it was going to be incredibly powerful and the final name wasn't gonna make me fucking lose it. One of the primary aspects of the system detail at the event was its backwards compatibility with GameCube games. Yeah, you could use GameCube games so Love much that. they incorporated the feature into the logo itself. Yeah. I'm really surprised others haven't gone with this design. But not only was it going to be backwards compatible with GameCube games, but all games as well. NES, SNES, and N64 games digitally downloadable via a virtual console, as they put it. This was a major deal. Nintendo home consoles didn't really do backwards compatibility back then. They Dirt. only really did it with yep. their handhelds. Sure, you could play some older Game Boy games on the TV with some of them, and some games were re-released, but by and large, you had to keep your old systems to play your old games. This way, you could play all the new Nintendo games, play your old GameCube discs, and download titles from all the other systems. You didn't need those old pieces of shit anymore. It was great. The virtual console <laughs> was further detailed at E3 2006, right around the time Nintendo officially announced the Revolution's real name was, you gotta be fucking kidding me. All these old games were playable with the. <laughs> I remember when they call it, we're ca gonna call it the Wii, and I'm just like, I, I didn't yeah, I like hated it. it. I was like, I was like, why not? You know, why not? Like, if Revolutions to, why not call it Rev R E V or you know something? Dude, I hated the Wii until I played Mario Kart on it. Yeah. And then I gave Wii Sports a try, and I was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> This is actually really fucking cool, man. I can't hate on this any longer. And then I got Modern Warfare on it. And I was like, whoa. That was actually fun as shit. Yeah. Retro Mote. The Wii Classic Controllers made a name, apparently. I love the E3 2006 user interface for the Virtual Console. Being able to see 3D renders of the box art, that was a nice touch. When the Wii launched on November 19th, 2006, you could hop on the Wii Shop channel and get to downloading 12 titles in total across the NES, SNES, N64, and Sega Genesis. Yeah, even <sighs> Sega got in on the fun with Altered, Altered Beast and Sonic the Hedgehog. The launch lineup had some of the major games you'd probably... I mean, mm -hmm. I look here, you know, Donkey Kong... Yes, banger. Mario Bros. Banger. Yep. You had Solomon's Key, which I've heard good things about. Eh, you had. Uh, I've never played it. I haven't either. F Zero. Yes. Legend of Zelda. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Sonic the Hedgehog. Yep. Yes. Altered Beast. Yep. Yes. Super Mario yep. sixty freaking four. Yeah. Yes. 
want, stuff like Mario 64 and Zelda. So good. But they also launched it with Wario's Woods and Soccer. Wario's Woods is an impulse buy at Walmart at best. Nintendo's strategy with re-releasing virtual console games was always Tech interesting mobile, to say yeah. the least. Like Nintendo themselves didn't release another virtual console game after launch until two weeks later and it was just Donkey Kong Jr. At least the Virtual Console had a lot of third-party support, so that definitely helped things out. Just two days after the Wii's launch, TurboGrafx-16 titles appeared on the shop. Genesis titles were added constantly, and Nintendo was just sitting there squirting out ice hockey and tennis back-to-back. -back. But then Christmas Day 2006 hit, and Nintendo finally re-released Super Mario Bros. <sighs> it's crazy it wasn't available at launch, but it paid for an incredibly <laughs> smart release on Christmas Day. If you didn't download yeah. Super Mario Bros. on your Wii, that was punishable by death in some countries. As time went on, more systems were added. Neo Geo, Sega Master System, System, even Commodore 64. Virtual Console Arcade was added in 2009, which was supposed to be a place for old school arcade games to roam free, and instead it was barely supported. Aww. NES games got the most love, over 90 released Shitty. here, and then at the very end of the line was N64 with only 21 games in total. I've sneezed more games than that before. The Virtual Console was <laughs> ridiculously active from 2006 to 2008, but after that, not so much. Nintendo already put out most of their big titles by the end of 2008, so it was up to the third parties to pick up the pace afterwards. For some reason, from spring 2012 to summer 2013, SNK put out 25 Neo Geo games, many of them well after the Wii U released. Some games were delisted over time, stuff like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for the NES, SimCity on the SNES, Such a bitch all of the Commodore 64 yes. games vanished in 2013. The Final Fight games, Yoshi's Cookie, a few of the Street Fighters, the Donkey Kong Country games disappeared in 2012. What the fuck is Yoshi's Cookie? Uh, it's basically Basically, a uh, uh, I think it's a similar to Dr. Mario. Oh. Uh. In 2015, for some reason. It's obvious as time went on that the Wii's virtual console was running out of steam with some delistings and less games being added. But that didn't detract from the overall experience. Having all these systems represented on the Wii was magical. Not only could people relive their childhood memories by playing their favorite NES and SNES games, but many could create new memories by playing these classic games for the first time ever. I mean, the Wii was the perfect platform for NES games. You look at the Wii remote and give it a little of this. Boom, NES controller. You have hey. all the buttons there, and it feels close enough to work well. Since the Wii Remote didn't have enough buttons for a lot of the other platforms offered, you would have Ugh. to use either the Wii Classic Controller or the GameCube Controller. The Classic Love Controller them. was pretty great Love for the Classic NES controller. Games, but yes. a little cramped for something like N64. Yeah, that's one thing I'll say. A bit, bit cramped and a bit over... I in you know, it, I loved it for the SNES stuff because, of course, I used my well, Wii yeah. modded for emulation. Yeah. Um, but for... for um, Obviously, for a lot of things, you just use the GameCube controller. Yeah. Uh, for most of the games that I played on the fucking Wii, I use the GameCube controller. I, honestly. I'll, I'll say this. The one controller that's come out now, uh, the 8-bit do at the uh, SN30 Pro 2, do. Mm. That thing, it's shaped like a PS5 controller, but it has the okay. button layout and the feel of the SNES controller. I'll be damned. I I, I want to get one and try it out Sounds and see cool. how it does. I really do. Or and they later re-released the Classic Controller Pro, which was much more appropriate yes, for 3D. Yes, I liked games. that one a lot. The GameCube controller is very mm. similar. Great for 3D, yep. but ho-hum for 2D. Torture is considered playing an SNES game on this thing. The buttons are all over the place. Mm. And you couldn't yeah. change the button layout for most VC games. I think you could do that with Virtual Console arcade titles, but I never downloaded any of those. Most games are pretty faithful to their original releases. You couldn't do anything crazy like apply filters or whatever, but some of them got a little adding online play to Super Street Fighter 2 on the Sega Genesis. I still get shows whenever I hear that. You could leave a game and come <laughs> back to it right where you left off with most titles except for the N64 and Neo Geo games. I always felt worried whenever I would do this. Like, you don't specifically hit a save button or whatever. You just leave the game and hope to God when you come back it picks up where you left off. Some yeah, problematic okay. things such as brand names or flashing lights were either toned down or removed entirely. And some features were added like being able to save your Pokemon Snap pictures to the Wii message board. But overall, if you were playing a virtual console game, you were playing the original release. The games looked pretty nice. Sure, NES games looked a bit dull, but they looked so organic, like you were playing them off an original console. You look at NES emulation yeah. now, and it's stupid crisp and colorful. But in my opinion, it looks a bit more artificial. It doesn't look like it's running off of an original NES. Don't get me wrong, this looks way better, 
but this looks more natural. Price points of mm. games were pretty fair, but they were fairly standard across an entire console's catalog. NES games were generally 500 Wii points, or 5 bones. SNES and Genesis were 8, N64 10, TurboGrafx-16 was whatever they felt like that morning. At least they kept things consistent and memorable. It was easy for me to know exactly how much a game would cost. But still, Mario 3 and Soccer were the exact same price. Ouch. Now, they mm. actually offered a few games that never released in North America, which was awesome. However, uh, they were more expensive than regular games because they labeled them as imports. Yeah, that's... What the hell are you talking about? You're not importing anything. It's a digital file. Yeah. I really want so yeah, weird. that's a bit that's a bit dumb. I don't understand that. Oh, also... Nintendo. Just Nintendo. Also, the Super Mario RPG. Right uh-huh. Yeah. Virtual console games back in... Well, you see, there's hope right now that... We are going to get another Super Mario RPG because Square and Nintendo, for the most part, have patched up a lot of their previous beef. Really? So, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed, and I'm hoping that it comes true. I'm not, I, I, you never know. I'm holding out hope. You never know. But I'm not being. But I'm not being. You know, I'm not going to be stupid about it. 2009, but the term Wi-Fi was completely foreign to my family at the time. I had to do so much damn research as a 12-year-old, and I found <laughs> the Nintendo Wi-Fi USB connector. I told my parents that was the ticket to downloading Wario's Woods, damn it! We went to Circuit City and left with this thing. Oh No. Poor Scott. Also, also... That was the ticket to downloading Wario's Woods, damn it! We went to Circuit... Also, that right there... Circuit City. How many oh people God, remember yeah. Circuit City? Oh my God! This this is the same cir you know Circuit City that went out of business because their CEO qu said, and I quote, "Nobody comes, nobody goes to electronic stores for video games." <laughs> oh, and then. Circuit City closed, I think it was uh, six years later after he made that statement. Well done. Wow. Well done. Bravo, sir. Circuit City and left with this thing. But that right there, you know, the LAN adapter. I've got one of those. I I've got a lot. Have I ever shown you my Wii setup? Dude, I've got a, some sick Wii shit. You have. And okay. I, I have a LAN adapter for my Switch. Uh, but again... The it, it's the Wii one. The one for the Switch is the same one that goes to the Wii. Yeah, it, it's ba it basically is. It's like one to one. I've it's... used my Wii one on the Switch before when I've been downloading a game. Really? It just takes forever. Yeah, I've used. Uh, Damn. Yeah, the little port that's in the charging station. You can plug it up to that. Damn. Mm -hmm. I I just I again, the fact that it took Nintendo until them releasing. <laughs> the switch oled yeah they finally had a proprietary land port on their system <laughs> i because remember... i was looking up how do you do this and all the shit was online was just like you just gotta use the way adapter for i was like what the fuck like wait what are you serious yeah how is this how is this like 2020 and i'm still having to learn to use Wii shit for nintendo product you gotta get off the Wii nipple at some point well uh, now that the switch is looking like it's going to outsell the wii i guess they're finally gonna un get off unreal that. and the fact that you know they still haven't announced a switch pro i know they did the switch oled yeah but a switch pro would definitely definitely be the next step for them here in the next year or so. I'm hoping. Mm, anyway, yeah. fingers crossed. Anyway, sorry. I knew for a fact it wasn't what I wanted, but whatever. It was a third-party Ethernet adapter for the Wii. We didn't get a Wi-Fi router until a couple months later, so I had to awkwardly connect my Wii via an Ethernet cable each time I wanted to go online. But it worked. I bought Super Mario Bros. 1 and 3, Punch-Out, Kid Icarus, Mega Man 1 and 2, Mario RPG, Donkey Kong Country. There were so many great games I replayed on the Wii Virtual Console or played for the first time ever. But the Wii did only cover home console games, which was only half of Nintendo's catalog. The Nintendo DSi came out in late 2008 and featured an online store of its own similar to the Wii Shop channel, but it didn't yep. have a virtual console. 
I always found that odd. They yeah. Got rid of the Game Boy Advance compatibility with this model of the DS, so I thought this would have been a perfect time to force us to buy those games digitally alongside Game Boy and Game Boy Color games. Well, we ended up having to wait until 2011 to do that. The Nintendo 3DS came out in March, and later in June, the Nintendo eShop launched, finally bringing Virtual Console to a handheld. Game Boy and Game Boy Color games finally were re-released, and they were so much fun, mainly because the 3DS had no games at this point, so I was happy to play Super Mario Land and Link's Awakening. The games were blown up a bit and looked a tad blurry for my liking. Now, you could hold select as the game was starting up to minimize the image, and it looked much crisper, and you also got this fun Game Boy border. You can even use the 3D slider to sync the screen in to make it feel more realistic. It's a really nice touch. Oh, wow. Plus, nice. if you hold LR and hit Y, you can swap between black and white or the original oh, ass green of yeah. the first game. Wow. Wow. Yeah, the dot matrix. Yeah, the dot matrix yeah. back. Yeah, that again. I think that that's really cool to have that as an option. It's pretty badass, dude. Yeah. It really is. There's a much more responsible save feature now, but you still can't map the buttons as you please. Because of the fact Game Boy games use B and A, you have to claw your thumb around the system to play something like a Mario game comfortably. Sega Game Gear games were eventually added in March of 2012. Damn. Sick. Oh, yay. I never saw anybody even remotely care about this edition. I like that Game I Gear would. games were here, but nobody ever talked about them. NES games were added in February of 2012, starting with the original Super Mario Brothers, and I will admit this here, the 3DS Virtual Console release of Super Mario Brothers was the way I first beat the game. Thankfully, with oh. the NES games, you could use X as another button for B, which made games way more enjoyable. What's weird is that hitting X on Game Boy games brought up the Virtual Console menu with NES, that's not the case. Finally, SNES games came to the 3DS. Wait, I'm sorry. New 3DS models only, starting in March of 2016. Yeah. Apparently, the CPU of the original 3DS just couldn't handle SNES games. What the fuck? That's embarrassing. I don't know. This was That's incorrect. Uh, because they actually showed that the Game Boy Advance's processor was capable of most, uh, most SNES games. Yeah. They, they Sounds showed like some that. bullshit to me. Well, again, it's just another excuse. It could have been the fact that maybe my like, new console like emulation of the Super FX chip, or you know, the mode mode seven or something like that. I don't know, but again, mm. uh, it's it's just to me a ploy for them to buy another console. That's it. Yeah. Buy another handheld. Just something where I feel like if they tried a bit harder, they could probably get SNES games running on the original 3DS models, but. They just kind of gave up and went for new 3DS only. My main problem with the SNES games on 3DS, though, was when they came out. 2016, man, I kind of lost interest in 3DS Virtual Console at this point, and I haven't downloaded any SNES games through the system up until now. So first impressions are pretty eh. The games don't look too hot, but when you go into the settings and turn on pixel perfect mode, oh my god, the games look so oh. good! They look excellent on the 3DS screen because they're not trying to blow up the game or anything, they're displaying it in the original resolution, and it looks beautiful on a 3DS display. Now this is a fair lineup for 3DS Virtual Console, but one system's oddly missing. Well, Advanced. because the 3DS was just not meeting sales expectations back in July of 2011, the price was slashed from 250 bones to a measly 170. To show their appreciation towards the people who bought the 3DS instead of paying off their mortgage, they offered early adopters 20 free virtual console games, 10 NES, 10 Game Boy Advance. Damn. These were given out to ambassadors wow. for free before anybody else could buy them. Now, the NES games, those were all made available on the eShop eventually. The Game Boy Advance games were only ever available to the early adopters adopters, or as Nintendo wow. called them, ambassadors. I unfortunately picked the 3DS up right when the price dropped, so I never got these games. The one thing <laughs> I never understood though was many people would ask Nintendo why GBA games weren't available on the 3DS Virtual Console, and they'd always say, oh, it's hard to make GBA work properly on the 3DS. But you already put GBA games on the 3DS, what are you talking about? Yes. Yes, they did. They just... Again, excuses, excuses. That's always excuses. the excuse. Is the, oh, it's difficult to do that. Mm -hmm. And it's like... You've already done it. Yeah. I mainly got behind the original Game Boy titles for the 3DS. I hate those things up. Around four bucks a piece, three bucks for the simpler games. I already replayed a lot of the NES games on the Wii, so I didn't really buy a ton of them on 3DS. Game Boy was just way more interesting to revisit, because in many cases, this was the first time these games were ever re-released. Mega Man and Dr. Wily's Revenge, the Mario Land games, especially Mario Land 2. Donkey Kong 94, Link's Awakening, the original Game Boy Tetris released, which was awesome, and it was later delisted, but hey, I got it. The Game Boy Pokemon games finally re-released in 2016, and they got around to doing the Game Boy Color games by 2017. 
And then Pokemon Crystal in 2018, just think about that, a Game Boy Color Virtual Console game came out in 2018. Even though I didn't buy a ton of NES stuff on the 3DS, they did bring over a few Japanese exclusive games for the first time, at reasonable prices. The mysterious Murasame hey. Castle and Summer Carnival 92 Rekka finally made it outside of Japan. Only on the 3DS, not Wii or Wii U, just 3DS, okay. Moving on to Wii U, the system launched in November of 2012, but no virtual console was in sight. You could boot up Wii Mode on Wii U to access standard Wii stuff, and here you could download and play virtual console games, but they were only available in Wii Mode. You couldn't play them with the Wii U gamepad or Pro mm. Controller or anything. It was basically playing Wii virtual console games on a Wii, on a Wii U. Eventually, in January of 2013, Nintendo announced a traditional virtual console for the system. If you transferred your Wii contents over to the Wii U, you could upgrade your Wii Virtual Console games to the Wii U versions at a discounted price once they were made available. They had this promotion going on for the Famicom's 30th anniversary, where each month for a little oh. while in 2013, mm -hmm. they'd offer an NES or SNES game for 30 cents. That was a really cool way to have my bank call me for suspicious activity on my account, because what else costs 30 cents? <laughs> Balloon Fight was the first release of... <laughs> He's not lying. I mean, honestly, yeah. the bank would just be like, uh, it would seem that uh, there's some fraudulent activity going on. Uh, this one company uh, in Japan is really nickel and diming you. Like every 30, it's like 30 cents like here, 30 cents there. If you don't get a handle on this, like, oh no, that's me. Yeah, that's, um, yeah. That's it, me. Uh, I'm doing that. Guilty. Yeah, guilty as charged. Guilty in January, and they offered one game a month as a part of the promotion, but this was just the soft launch. The official launch of the Wii U Virtual Console was on April 26th, 2013. And nobody cared! The magic of these games being playable on modern systems <sighs> was kind of gone. These were all games that released via the Wii Virtual Console. There was nothing new here. Sure, Wii U Virtual Console games were a bit more robust. You had much more responsible save states, like with the 3DS, and you could actually change up the button layout to your liking. That was fantastic. You could pull up the manual and flip through that on the Wii U gamepad and play the entire game on the gamepad in general. That was a nice feature. But that didn't help the fact that these were still the same games we played on the Wii Virtual Console, and even then, not even close to all of them. Nintendo was just going to slowly trickle out their Virtual Console games all over again. Like, yeah, Link to the Past is great, yeah. but we already got it. What else is new? And on the Wii, so bringing it back on the Wii U in 2014 wasn't as exciting or as big of a deal as Nintendo wanted it to be. There was also the problem of the systems on Wii U Virtual Console. What systems? Only NES and SNES games were available at launch. And then Game Boy Advance games the year after- what? Who was asking for Game Boy Advance games on the Wii U? I think it's fair to say most were wanting GameCube or N64 or yeah. for Game Boy Advance games to be available for purchase on the 3DS, but nope. Nintendo really threw a curveball with that one. Nintendo 64 finally followed in 2015 alongside DS games. That was pretty nice. It was great to be able to finally play DS games on the TV. Even if they weren't that fun to play on the TV, it just feels a little awkward. They give you a ton of different display methods, but you have to manually change it for each game you play, and sometimes none of them feel that natural. Wii games were made available for digital yeah. purchase in early 2015, which they're sometimes referred to as virtual console titles, sometimes they're not. But yeah, they offered Wii games digitally. Okay, I can already play these games on my Wii U. Sure, it's nice to have an option to download a game, but not very exciting. And finally, no. the last system to be offered on the Wii U Virtual Console, Turbo Graphics, what the fuck? The majority of Turbo Graphics 16 <laughs> games that came out for the Wii U. God dang it. Oh. Last one to be off. Turbo Graphics. What, what the fuck? Of course. Came out after the Nintendo Switch launched. Now, SNES and GBA games looked phenomenal on the Wii U, really. These games cleaned up incredibly well and looked beautiful through HDMI. So what the hell happened here? Ugh. NES and N64 games look like garbage. They're washed out and too dark and blurry and not pleasant to look at at all. All. Now, I know I sort of complimented the Wii's virtual console and how NES games looked like with it, but keep in mind, the Wii wasn't an HD system and it was from 2006. I liked how the games looked organic, yeah. but I expected them to be sharper, clearer, and just more colorful on the Wii U. DS games look mm -hmm. okay. I don't really think it has anything to do with the emulation quality, it's more so the fact that I, I don't think DS games age that well visually. Now, the Wii U did get some cool VC releases. Earthbound finally got re-released, that was a big one. It famously skipped the Wii Virtual Console, even after Iwata name dropped it at E3 2005. The idea of a single device transporting us back to the first Excite Bike, Earthbound, or Punch-Out should make us all feel young again. Rest in peace, Satoru Iwata. Damn. But it finally came out. 
for $2 more than the standard SNES games, okay. But not only that, Earthbound Beginnings finally got a release outside of Japan, that was awesome! $2 more awesome than your standard NES game. Ugh. Duck Hunt and a few <laughs> other light gun NES games got re-released for the first time. The virtual console versions using the Wii Remote's pointer. There was some good stuff, but it was few and far between. And when they actually started to put out more interesting games, a lot of people, including myself, just lost interest. They had a major problem with scheduling these games for release. We already replayed most of these games on the Wii. They weren't exciting anymore. But they still drip fed us these things over a period of four years. For some reason, Mario 3 was announced wow. for a virtual console release in August 2013, and it came out in April 2014. Wow. How the hell did Mario 3 get delayed? Also, they never released Yoshi's oh, Cookie. Oh they said they were going to release it, and they never did. Uh -oh. Well, that was it. <laughs> The Virtual Console brand ended with the Wii U. I understand getting rid of the name just because it doesn't really mean much anymore. Now, that doesn't mean classic games aren't being sold on modern Nintendo systems. Of course they are. Nintendo offers both older games as full-blown releases or as a bonus for signing up for their online service. Third-party companies either release their old games through Nintendo's Classic Games app or on their own, either through collections or just simple eShop releases. However, I think it's fair to say I miss Virtual Console, even considering all of its problems. Well, yeah, getting collections of old games mostly makes it so you end up paying less for all of them. I really loved the uniformity of the Virtual Console games. The fact they all had similar icons on your menu made it feel much more like they were actual games a part of your actual collection. It was a much simpler yeah. method of releasing older games than yeah. how they're released now. You either have to buy compilations with a bunch of games you might not even want, or they're overpriced, or they're a part of a subscription service, and because of that, games release incredibly slowly because it's probably more complicated to license games for that. Virtual Console yeah. was easy to understand, and it was fun to discover old games that you might not have played or rediscover old favorites. However, I'm inclined to say the service peaked with the Wii. Almost every console you could have wanted was offered. With yeah. the 3DS and Wii U, there were always auto missions. Why did Genesis and Master System never come to the Wii U? Why did it take so long to get N64 or even TurboGrafx-16? Why did GameCube games never come? It felt like to me that Nintendo wasn't trying enough with the Wii U Virtual Console, and in some cases the 3DS as well, and we see that continuing today with the Nintendo Switch. They spent an entire year just re-releasing NES games, while with the past three systems they were reselling the same NES games, and because of that, Nobody cares anymore! The nostalgia for NES games has completely flatlined. There is still some great NES stuff out there, but the amount of love for the system isn't growing as much as it was in 2006. N64, GameCube, and Wii era games are the big nostalgic money makers right now. Yes. The people who grew up with those systems are old enough to want to play them again. But NES games are way easier to re-release, that's why we're mainly getting them. I miss Wii Virtual Console era because it didn't feel like Nintendo made up excuses as to what they will and won't re-release. And now it feels like they yeah. say, oh, GameCube games are so hard to re-release. Here's Wrecking Crew, you'll like that. All in all, even if the service got worse with each console it appeared on, I'm gonna miss the Virtual Console. Even if Yoshi's Cookie never came to Wii U. Am I the only one that cares about that? General population, <laughs> you give a shit that Yoshi's Cookie never made it to Wii U Virtual Console. No. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> wow. Uh, Jesus. So, yeah. Damn. It, again, you know, availability... I, I'm happy that a lot of these older games are available, but at the same time... Oh, yeah. What's wrong with trying to eke in the next generation. I mean, I think that's how it should go. With every new console that comes out, you should try and reel in and make the games that were on the, you know, the next generation of console available. You know, or the, again, I think it's like a two or three console thing. Uh, you know, like, yeah. For instance, uh, the Switch is out now. There's no reason why that thing cannot emulate GameCube games super easy. Uh, my phone can. Yeah, exactly. Your phone <laughs> like, can. Like super easy. Yeah, but but super yet, easy. But yet, so my phone can, and my last phone before it could also, and but, the last phone I had before it could also. But you're telling me that a machine that has the same graphics capability as an Nvidia Shield, it it, it can't emulate a friggin' uh friggin' GameCube it, game. Dude, you you can play The Witcher on it. Yes. You know, you can play The Witcher 3 on it. You can play Doom Eternal on it. I don't understand why it... You it, should be able to play fucking, you know... Luigi's Mansion. Luigi's Mansion. F-Zero GX. Or, 
you can play Fucking... Smash, Smash Brothers Melee. You can play. Uh, you can play yeah. Beautiful Joe. Beautiful Joe Two. You can play Mario uh, Super Mario Toadstool Tour. You can do an HD remake. You know Toadstool Tour HD. You know why not do that? Why not? Twilight give these... Princess. Yes, Twilight Princess. Eternal Darkness. For God's sake. Eternal Darkness. There are so yeah. many great games that are on the that are on the Dude, GameCube. Twin Snakes. Yes. How cool would Dude, that be? Twin Snakes is in a lot of people's minds one of the better versions of of metal gear solid 2 and but it's my yeah and, and again it's a good one it's a great game and i think that yeah. overall the whole thing with nintendo dragging their feet on that it just makes people crave that nostalgia even more pokemon dx would be cool oh to see out gosh, somewhere yes dude again cool. there are so many great things that they could do and then of course not only that but the the wii u or the wii uh, would be very easy to emulate on it, i they don't have to do it with the switch they could do some games right. on the switch but the next console after the switch should have that as uh have that as just like a feature you know probably will yeah it, you know virtual console for the wii there's always dolphin yeah I mean, why not? Dolphin is fucking. Dolphin is one of the best emulators out there. Dolphin period. kills it. It's so good. Yes, and I it's a really and, good one. And whenever I get my I and Odin, I'm probably going to do that and play as many a game, you know, GameCube games as I can on that. Dude, I had I had Dolphin running on my phone, and used the Dolphin bar and plugged it into my phone uh -huh. with a, a USB to USB C adapter. Yeah. And I was able to play Wii Sports on my phone really? with an actual Wii Wiimote. Mo oh yeah. my god, dude! Yeah, yeah. Dolphin is legit. So when you get the awesome. Odin, you'll be able to do. Oh, oh man! I, considering I'm wondering it, if the PS3 emulator will work on it. I would love to see it. Oh yes, uh, that's. I would love again, to see that's that. That's one thing we will definitely have to try whenever it comes in. Because I got the top end version. I got the Pro, and it's going to. Yeah. And it and I'm also going to put. A big ass hard drive on the back of it, so we have all well, the space in the I, world. I know it. it will work in your house. I know that yes. using Steam Link, you can play it off of your computer. So oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You can stream. I know that PS3 will be able to be playable on it, but I wonder if there's going to be when because there's Mobile. so many uh, Android devices out there that are capable of running it that there's going to be an Android app made for that fucking program because there's already an exported to android uh version of the playstation one emulator that's on uh desktop or pc and the dolphin emulator that's on pc and the one that's on android are, are the same people and it's almost yeah. the same thing and I, it's it's bound to happen sooner and rather than later and again the ian odin where where it has connector, it has like controller ports on the dock for uh -huh. GameCube, Nintendo Switch, or yeah, Nintendo 64. Uh, it has all, it has the USB thing for, uh, you know, for everything else. I, again, there is no limit to the stuff that you'll be able to do on that thing. <laughs> It'll be pretty insane, dude. I There's no wait. doubt about that. I, I literally can't wait, dude. I'm so excited to give that yeah. a shot. But anyway, we are going to have to end this one here, everyone. This was Scott the Waz, a look back at the virtual console. Uh, good retrospect on this. Good, oh, good yeah. call-outs on this shit, Scott. Uh, we always enjoy Scott's uh, little, uh, you know, little uh, uh, anecdotal, uh, you know, investigation and uh, little, uh, like, retro, uh, retro callback videos. And again, oh, yeah. knowing two people who are, you know, you and me both, we're all about that. We're all about the retro. For sure. So again, I guess uh, until next time, everyone, signing off, I'm Nate. I'm Chad. We'll see you later. Peace. <laughs>